I'm gonna have expansions and stuff to show off with it, but I'll start with the main game. So th this was the Kickstarter, I believe possibly all in backing of this game. So keep that in mind if you, if they end up selling it retail or elsewhere, that some of these uh, either expansions or components may not be in the game you pick up. Macaroon. Uh, this is a pastry themed trick taking card game um, for one to five bakers. So one, once I open it up, relearn the rules, I can potentially play it on stream for y'all. Uh, so this is from Tate Wu. And then the artist is uh, Holly Chu and Rachel Kim, publisher Sunrise Tornado Game Studio. Uh, so let's see what, we, what kind of trouble we can get into with unboxing this game. It does say one to five players in 30 minutes, ages 10 and up. So the artwork alone is just very calming, relaxing. It's like, okay, I've picked up a box of macaroons for dessert here. It's very soothing, relaxing, unintimidating. Lid comes off. Components. Okay, so we got some wooden components of different colors right here. We'll go over that. Oh, make sure we go over them. It looks like some cardboard. Uh, token chits that you don't have to punch. Uh, so I already pre-punched, put in a Ziploc, which is nice. And we got some cards, some different uh, cardboard token tiles, which we'll look at in our rule book. Oh, and then our scoring board, which is double-sided, so it depends on player count which side you use and how you use it okay so we got rule books right here it looks like one is in English and the other potentially French I am unsure but at a quick glance that appears to be potentially a French rule it's translation. If you look at the back, it says uh, traduction Francaise. So I believe that is basically saying uh, translation to French. This who helped them translate the rule book, the rules to French. I will not attempt to read any of that because I do not know French, and I will butcher it worse than uh, trying to make a macaroon from scratch myself. I can bake, I can cook. I have not tried macaroons yet, so I'd be terrible at it and speaking French would be even worse for me right now. So it talks about players, time, and age right on the front cover, which is always nice. Uh, it gives you a quick summary and the goal of the game. So if, uh, say, you're pulling off the shelf uh, that you've never played or someone that wanted to check it out real quick that's an easy quick way to be like okay that's what this game about nice and easy uh gives us our components oh nice and then along here it gives us on what page you're likely to find certain things like set up uh the rounds and tricks uh, winning tricks end of round so oh you have a question about this stage of the game go to that page so it's a lot easier to find something all the components i have game set up uh, based on player count, it breaks that down already. Uh, round setups, and it's breaking it down by player count again uh, for variation as you go. So you don't have to basically turn to the back of the book for solo or whatever it may be. Keeps going. Tricks, playing tricks, and describing them. Uh, then it has the solo style. Um, gives examples of something uh, winning tricks end of round end of game so very straightforward I want to make sure those rules get to, onto the top 
of the game when I'm done, not the bottom. Now, uh, I'm glad the other game I recently opened had extra Ziplocs because I'll probably want all these cards on the Ziploc in this box. But let's take a look. Otherwise, I got a glare. I do apologize about that. So let's take a look at the actual components now. We'll start with what's already out of box. So, okay, so this is helpful. So at the top of these, so they're different colors for one, but they also have player count on them. So this is like four and five, four and five, that chocolate, not the one. Uh, we have three, four, five, or one and two uh, for the, I believe it's a, a matcha flavored one. Or matcha and the purple was. I don't remember what the malt. Then we got like our blueberry and strawberry options. Uh, looks like no player count on that, so always the same. And then we have our almond and our pistachio style. So. You got your A, B, C, D scoring option. So I guess if you only have one or two players in the game, it takes out the purple one. Uh, so you don't have too many different variations of macarons for tricks. Okay, and now we got wooden components for players. So. both the different colors pretty easy to tell the difference uh, pretty generic shapes nothing over the top then um, I don't know how these colors are for colorblind since there's no variation in the shapes um, I don't know if the, the shades might be different if you're fully colorblind but I don't know how well this would work out since they're not standard red, red, green, blue, um, white style uh, colors that you are used to seeing. But we have a very pastel color line which matches the, R, the rest of the R we've seen so far. But black, blue, pink, yellow, orange, very straightforward. Maple, a block, and a circle. Now, some of you might wonder why you need three uh, tokens per player. If I remember correctly from when I played this, um, each round consists of essentially a, a betting round. And so you're placing a token on a place that you're betting. Uh, one of them is used for the actual score around the board. The other was for something else. I don't remember at the moment. Okay, and now we've got some tokens. If I remember correctly, these are used to basically set, um, kind of help set trump suits. Um, they also set uh, the bad suits because uh, each round you end up with essentially a an allergen, uh, basically some, something that you don't want because it would make you sick. Uh, and then like kind of like the best suit. I'd have to go go back to the rules to verify the different symbols on these, but essentially you're you're betting like you're setting up and you're um, not betting. You're you're placing tokens to help adjust the value of certain flavors, which then affects which one becomes allergens and trumps for the round before you actually start playing cards. So I'd have to go back to the rules to verify how that works, but that's what some of these tokens are about. Uh, you, know, you essentially end up with at least one token per round, and you're placing it on different flavor locations in the value adjustments. Uh, adjust up, adjust it up and down to make it uh, more or less valuable for the round, essentially. To, get, to want to aim for, or not aim for, in, that, in some cases. Okay, and now we have cards. 
So just before we even open the package, like, how hungry does this artwork make you feel for macarons and desserts? This tiered tower plate of macarons. Oh, now a quick glance. It's the only downside so far I found. No quick tear on this plastic. Fortunately, there are corners because you're on card corners. This plastic bunches up just enough. I should be able to get a knife in there without tearing. Yep, I'm gonna do that. So just enough to not tear. Deal with the cards and get that plastic. Not ideal, but it's I've dealt with worse packaging, so I didn't have to knife across the cards and potentially cut one. So let's take a look at the backs of all these. Okay, so the backs are all the same. We'll look at the suits. Okay, so the suit almond one through seven. See if we can get it without glare. There we go. We have our pistachio suit. Also one through seven. Next we have our strawberry suit. Again, one through seven. Blueberries, the same at one through seven. Our, I believe this was the matcha. Oh, yeah, green tea. Essentially matcha. And then the purple. That's the one I can remember. Earl Grey. And I believe that one also had yep, one through seven. And then last but not least is gonna be chocolate, but this goes one through ten. So these are the cards you use during the game. Uh dealt a a certain number each round, playing them to win the tricks. Hopefully you don't have too many of the suit that are of the allergen, because those are ones you don't want to, to gain. And let me get a Ziploc to fit these in. Fortunately, I got extra Ziplocs from another game laying around, because I want these cards in a Ziploc in the box. And I'll throw those in the box. Okay, so that was the base game. Now, next up is all the expansions and bonuses that I pulled from Kickstarter. So we'll check out what these are. First off is this wooden component. It's been joked about online that this is the elephant, elephant in the room with its nose. Kind of its big hump back, its little legs, and its big trunk sticking up. But in reality, this is our, our teacup. This is our, our, our mug full of tea or coffee, whatever it may be, that we're going to be sipping along as we eat our macarons. And I believe this is was the first player token, potentially the bonus from uh, bonus that only comes with the Kickstarter. I would have to confirm that. You can correct me if I'm wrong. So that's going to go in the box. Take it in right there. Next up, we got. So, and then we got this little pamphlet that talks about what all the expansions are. So, we got uh, at least three different expansions one, two, three. Uh, instead of the cards themselves, may not be labeled, but it says on there. So, I'm going to keep that in the box. We'll just open an expansion at a time and look at the new artwork. So this is the skinniest of the three. These cards are super tight in that bag opening. There we go. So the back of this one. Ooh, look at that artwork. That nice. Uh, I kind of want to say cherry blossom tree. I'm pro it's probably not. It's just a very vibrant pink leafed tree. Okay, and then we have the backs of these say noble uh, so we actually have someone standing in front of the tiered tower of macarons now and on the face of these 
it looks like different uh, powers potentially. So we got switcheroo power, uh, Joker on deck, revolution, severe allergies, noble's favor, uh, miscalculations, and a quick diet. Um, won't go over all the powers, but like the quick diet. First player who plays the lowest card leads the next trick. So it's going to affect when, uh, the tricks themselves, um, who gets to play next. So you may not always necessarily get to go first or on the next trick, or it may change the allergens or the point values for certain cards. Those will be left for you to discover as you play it. So the next one, this uh, next thing of cards, more on this one. So all of these back are like the standard cards. So I'm assuming these are going to be cards you mix in and shuffle. Okay, so we got some zero cards of the almond, pistachio, strawberry, blueberry, green tea, pearl green, chocolate. So remember before we were one through seven on most of those decks and then one through 10 on chocolate. And now we got some mixed flavors, um, like an almond pistachio, an almond gray, pistachio berry, pistachio tea, uh, straw blue, blue green, and green gray. So uh, these are number eight cards, kind of like Trump Wilds. You can use them multiple ways. So it definitely will change the dynamic of how those cards are played. Let's see if I can get them back in the Ziploc real quick. Now these Ziplocs are like just the exact size of the card. So they are very tightly fit. You almost have to go like one or two at a time to try to keep that bag straight. And this was just the medium size expansion that had, didn't have the most in it. So I know this next bag is going to be tight to get in and out. Ah, oh, nope. They actually put it in a bigger Ziploc so it's easy to get in and out of. Okay, so the decks on this one are the card backs first. We have some King's Orders. We have uh, Barista. And then we have Emma. Uh, okay. So we did see Emma in the main rules. I wonder what this, these do. Well, it's possible. Okay. So that medium sized deck cards that we just looked at. That was the Jester expansion. Uh, okay, and that small one we opened had the Sunset, which is a one card expansion. The Zeros were an expansion. So then we have King's Order expansion, Nobles we already saw. So there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different expansions. So this is really three different ones right here. So we're gonna look at one at a time, King's Orders. So they give orders uniformity. The other player has at least two tricks and the fewest flavors microns and allergen free tricks will receive two points. So very orderly. Oh, I'm not gonna read all these, but we, maybe he likes variety, originality, minimalist, allergist, precision, or flexibility. So that's one of the expansions. We have the Emma cards now. Uh, first one says Emma wins all ties. Okay, I don't know what the Emma expansion is about. Didn't read it that deep. Uh, like when Emma leads with three or four, treated as a six. I wonder if Emma is the solo AI system. I'll have to learn that later. And then next, last but not least is. Uh, Baristos. Oh, there's a lot of symbols on these. Amateur. Uh, specific. The Cabo Just desserts. Recipitage. Master the 
master or under chef and the perfectionist. So these tend to be more about the betting and changing the bets or affecting how things have been bet. So that is the, all of the cards for Macaron. Put it all into the box. Nice thing is, even though it came with all these expansions, they made sure all of this still fits in that main box. So that's a small box. Think of how much gaming that is now. Seven expansions. Main game is about 30 minutes for ages 10 and up. P plays one to five players. So, like, you're not stuck with the trick-taking game. That's only four players or only two players. Um, it's a nice large variety of play counts, so you can play with groups. You can play it alone. Or, say, there's families or game nights when you have that one extra person to show up. You can still play it as well. Nice, small enough. You can throw it into a backpack or something. And the trick-taking style is something you can introduce to... Um, People are not used to gaming as much, so because they may recognize and at least understand other trick-taking style games, such as hearts or spades, and then you can draw them into uh, more theme and more more rules beyond what those games types of games have to really bring them into the hobby in a fun way. So that was Mac Macaron. So that was the sixth game we unboxed tonight. And...